In this very short screencast, we'll take a quick tour through the entire model view controller flow. I've got the output of rake routes up here to remind us that when we visit the home page of our application, that's going to route us to the index action of the movies controller. So let's start by taking a look at what happens in that action. I've got the movies controller file here, and here's the index action. And the only thing going on in here is we're calling the find method, which is actually a method defined on active record. And we're going to get all the movies in the database, order them by their release date, and assign the result to the instance variable movies. Now, you might ask, an instance variable of what? Movies is actually an instance variable of the controller object itself. And the reason that we're setting it up here is that when we render the view, any instance variables that were defined in the controller action will be accessible to, to the view so that it can display them. Now, speaking of the view, one thing that seems to be absent from this controller method is any information about rendering a view as the result of executing the action. And we know that because HTTP is a request reply protocol, every controller action ultimately has to render something that can be returned back to the user. So you might have already guessed what's going on here. This is another example of Rails using convention over configuration. In particular, unless we specify otherwise, after executing a controller action, Rails is going to look for a view whose name matches the name of the action, so in this case index, and which is located in a subdirectory for the same resource as the controller controls. So this is the movies controller. Remember, it's the controller for the movies restful resource. That means that Rails is going to look in the views subdirectory, within there the movies subdirectory, and within there a file whose name begins with index. And the suffix is html.haml means we're going to use the Haml preprocessor to convert it to HTML. Now in the next screencast, we're going to look at what this view actually does. But just to recap what we've seen here, we find ourselves in the appropriate controller action. We can set up some instance variables that are going to be available to the view. And unless we override somehow what view is going to be rendered, Rails will use convention over configuration to pick a view whose name matches the controller action and whose subdirectory matches the resource that this controller is for. In the next screencast, we'll explain how the Haml markup in this view becomes XHTML.